Polingoli, 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 Polingoli. Oh, no, 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 no. When Bolingoli gets his hat trick, then I'm gonna go through the whole motions of that song. But before I get into today's content, make sure you like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. You get me? We're chasing 2,000 subscribers now, and I firmly believe that we can get this done quick, fast, sharpish, because you lot have set the standard. And thank you yet again, but please continue to do so with the sharing. But what are we here for? What are we here for? Chelsea's 3 0 win against Aston Villa. And before I get into the content, one more time, if you have been watching Troops is Back Again, that was my prediction. Chelsea to win 3-0. And what happened? Chelsea won 3-0. We slapped Aston Villa. But there's no disrespect to Aston Villa because they did come out swinging. They had a very good game. And I think the scoreline for them was a little bit unfair. But it just goes to show the stellar nature of Chelsea's defending. And one man in between those gates by the name of... Benjamin Mendy, world-class goalkeeper, absolutely world-class today. But before we get into the game, let's get into the lineups. Let's know who we're going to start the game off with today. So, lineups, obviously, I've given you the first big clue of who's in the goal. That's big man Mendy. Then we've got the centre-back trio of Thiago Silva, Chalabar and Rudiger. Then we've got our two wing-backs on the right. We've got Callum hudson Odoi On the left, we've got Marcus Alonso, my man. And then we've got the midfield pivot of Kovacic and Saul, and then the front three attack of Ziyech, Havertz and Lukaku. Let's look at the bench. Kepa, Aspi, Chilwell, Christensen, Barkley, Jorginho, Loftus-Cheek, Mount and Timo Werner. Now let's get into the game. Now you see the first half. The first half was a bit squeaky bum time for Chelsea. Aston Villa were just getting through and through and through. Ollie Watkins was having a good time. Douglas Louise was having a good time. Why was this happening? Are we going to address the elephant in the room early? I think we are. And that elephant in the room is Premier League debutant, signed on loan from Atletico Madrid, Saul Niguez. But before we get into the criticism of Saul Niguez, because he does deserve it, let's be fair and look at the circumstances around this situation, right? Saul's been at the club for five minutes. I think he's only been there like a week. So he's not really had much time to, to bed in, has he? He's got to learn a, a new language. Not sure if he speaks proper English or understands English. So we've got to remember that. He's got to know his teammates. He's got to adapt to a new country and he's got to adapt to new tactics. And he's got to adapt to a new league. So that's six very difficult things that he has to do in a very short space of time. And you also have to respect and understand. To play in a midfield pivot, in a midfield two, in the Premier League is a very, very difficult task. It's a very difficult task. Am I surprised that Saul didn't hit the ground running? I'm not really. I'm a little disappointed that he didn't, but that's just me being like selfish and greedy and like, mm, I just want him to come in and slap a 30 yarder, you get me? But you gotta be realistic. You gotta be patient with people, man. I'm not really too surprised he had a stinker. Am I concerned about it? Absolutely not, because you've also got to understand that Saul is coming from a Diego Simeone side. The man don't carry slackers, you know? Trust me, like, you got to look at the circumstances around it. And also, this is Saul's, like, first move, like, outside of Atletico. Although I do think, like, in his younger years, he did get a loan. But uh, that doesn't really count, though, does it? Like, this is his first big move. So, give the man some time. Remember, we got Thomas Tuchel. How many careers did we think at Chelsea were dead before Tuchel came? Marcus Alonso, we wanted him out. Uh, Rudiger, we wanted him out. The current UEFA men's winner, right? Jorginho. We wanted him out. Look at them three. Give him time. Be patient. Don't be so harsh on Saul, man. He's going to be a blue. He's going to settle in. He's going to take some time. He's going to understand the tactics and watch. He's going to be like a duck to water. I'm not too worried. So big up yourself, Saul. But he was the cause of a lot of problems. Aston Villa did get in behind. They did get quite a few chances putting our defence under pressure. But we did have one man who made the difference. World-class performance from Edouard Mendy. And to those of you that have been watching this channel, remember, I've been saying it. I've been saying it, man like Edouard Mendy, yeah, there's going to be a discussion at the end of the season of him being the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. Yes, I know Alisson's here. Yes, I know Edison's here. I don't care. The agenda started early and he's showing why I'm right to flag this agenda high. That man is a world-class keeper and by the end of the season, we'll be talking about him as the best goalkeeper in the Prem. He was already recognised as the best um, goalkeeper in the Champions League last season now it's got to be in the Prem and I'm very confident that he can do it 
but that first half there was a lot of space in between um in between the lines particularly in the defense and the midfield because obviously Saul not understanding his his role Kovacic had to do as much as he could by himself and boy what a performance did Kovacic made Kovacic was absolutely stellar his range of passing his ability to beat the press his vision his execution of that pass yeah world class and let's get into that Kovacic beat the press as he does so fluidly the man's like water when he dribbles man he's world class this is a world class midfielder we're talking about here bro he's getting me gassy and when he dribbles he's just quality in small spaces he beats the press you saw what he did he beat them two defenders out of the game drove forward picked up his head played an incisive inch perfect weighted pass to Lukaku Lukaku didn't even need to break stride and if you're a striker and you played football understand how much a striker loves it when they don't have to break stride to receive the ball to go through and goal and score it just makes their job that much easier so that in itself was an absolute elite pass then you've got Mr. Big Man Bolingoli 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 20 AB first of all, yeah? He sent him back to Manchester. He said, what are you doing here, blood? You play for Man United, go back to Manchester. <laughs> Chopped him. My man, see you, gone. Goalkeeper to beat. Goalkeeper's already wrong-footed because he didn't expect Bullingali to just flip in, send Twan AB one way back to Old Trafford, blood, yeah? Bullingali on his weaker foot slaps it, 1-0. World-class finish, world-class assist. That goal was just made from the elite. Elite everything. Elite everything start to finish. That was just the epitome of Chelsea Football Club currently. Elite. Yeah? Still Aston Villa being very brave. Oli Watkins again partnering, uh, partnering up well on that right side, man. Um, obviously had a few opportunities, but Mendy again, he's just there to make the saves. You can't Mendy... Anyway, I've said enough about Mendy, you already know what I think. But by the way, if you think Mendy is a world-class goalkeeper, smash that like button. Smash that like button. Yeah, and if you think that he could be spoken about or will be spoken about as the best goalkeeper in the Prem at the end of the season, let me know down there in the comments. End of the first half, elephant in the room had to be addressed. Thomas Tuchel couldn't ignore it anymore. Saul had to come off. Had an absolute stinker, dropped a 1 out of 10 most probably, yeah, 0 out of 10 to be honest with you by Chelsea standard. Had to hook him off, unlucky Saul, he's going to come back better, stronger and we're going to see his quality. But guess who comes on and this is the squad depth that I'm talking about from Chelsea Football Club. The Europa, the, the, the Super League winner, the Europeans, the, 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 the European champion winner with Italy, the Champions League winner with Chelsea bruv. Are you mad? The UEFA Men's Player of the Year. Are you dumb? Jorginho comes on to steady the ship. And that he did. Although in the first half, early on, Aston Villa again on the front foot getting opportunities. Like testing Rudiger and, 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 and Alonso down that side. Trust me, man. They was coming at us with force. Um, honestly, Callum Hudson-Odoi on that other side as well, fam. You can see he was getting beaten, but he's not a natural defender. He's not a natural defender, so I'm not going to be too harsh on him. Thiago Silva. Thiago Silva. As much as I have been giving praise to Mendy, how can I not mention Thiago Silva? What a performance from him, especially in the first half as well. World-class performance. That block that he made, yeah, could have easily been a handball. The way he got himself in front of that, that was crucial. That was crucial to our clean sheet. Had that had gone in, you don't know how the game would have gone. So that there was absolutely immense. Thiago Silva take a bow. You were fantastic. Positioning was just on point. He was vocal today. He really led that line like the leader we know that he is. So hats off to Thiago Silva. I ain't going to take it off because that's long. You already know there's no hairline here. So loud a hat. The hat's staying on. You get me? So, yeah, Jorginho comes on in the second half, steadies the ship a little bit. Aston Villa are going forward. They are getting opportunities. Douglas Louise linking up well with, with John McGinn, who does come onto the field later on. Um, we did see the old boy who did score against us in the last game, but didn't celebrate. Man Natural came on, was looking a little tricky down that side. But Chelsea, we had way too much for them. Way too much for them. Our pressing up top was fantastic. It's that man again, Kovacic. Kovacic, where there wasn't an opportunity or shouldn't have been an opportunity, Kovacic latched onto it. A horrible, horrible back pass from um, that man Tyrone Mings. 
back to the goalkeeper. It was short. The goalkeeper couldn't get there on time. Kovacic, with a striker's instinct, latches onto it. Oh, my God. Definitely puts it over the keeper. Slaps the inside of the post. And what a finish. Just caps off a performance. Caps off a world-class elite performance so far from Mateo Kovacic. He deserved that goal. Any elite world-class striker would have been happy with that. A lot of people are going to be saying, oh, yeah, it was a gift, it was a gift. But listen, watch the replay again, yeah? The keeper done well, obviously, to narrow that angle. There was a lot for him to do. So to take that instinct, to chip that ball over the keeper the way that he did, he lifted it over the keeper, slapped it in the inside of the post, confidently that was a world-class finish and it really epitomized that man of the match performance from Mateo Kovacic which he was awarded the man of the match but obviously before we get onto that there is another goal that we do need to talk about and some substitutions that we do need to talk about Kai Havertz he's not gonna get away with it today yeah Kai Havertz I love you listen man Kai Havertz do I know what he's worth of course I do I love Kai but he is not exempt from criticism Kai today had a stinker nothing was going right for him his touch was well his touch was all right that was probably the best aspect of his game but everything else he weren't beating players he wasn't making the right decisions the passes weren't quite coming off his positioning wasn't all there like he was being marked out of the game a bit too easy I don't know if Kai Havertz is fatigued is he got heavy legs let me know down there in the comments what happened with Kai Havertz today but he had an absolute stinker he was hooked off um, as was obviously Saul did come on for Jorginho. Callum Hudson Odoi did come on. I mean, Callum Hudson Odoi, he was moved over to the left wing when Azpilicueta did come on for that right wing back position. So um, Callum could go on that left wing. Didn't really have too much to do there. Did look a bit electric on that side. Did look like he enjoyed the few minutes that he did have there. But he, uh, ultimately, he didn't really have enough time. Um, Odoi came off for Timo Werner, another one. I think he had like, what, five, six, seven minutes. Didn't really have time to do much. Um, but yeah, we're going to get on to this Lukaku goal. Again, Bolingoli. Hey, Bolingoli, man. This guy is an absolute... If you're still criticising this guy, I don't know what planet you're living on. You're just hating at this point. I don't care that if his touch is off or whatever. The man was signed to score goals and he's one of the best in the world at it. And he showed it today. That first finish was world class. That second finish was world class. The composure. Picked his spot. Slapped it there. 2-0. That's three goals in three games in the Prem for Romelu Lukaku. You better start putting respect on this man's name because he's going to be a contender for the Golden Boot. It's going to be between him and Cristiano Ronaldo at the end of the season. I'm confident of that. Yeah. But Lukaku, take a bow. Fantastic finish. Rounds off the day 3 0 um, with what was a mixed performance by Chelsea. Obviously, we could see the glaring problem, which was Saul. When Jorginho came on, he did steady the ship a bit. He controlled the game a lot more. As you know, he made himself available, was keeping things ticking, making intelligent passes, actually breaking up play quite well as well, giving Kovacic a bit more of a relief. Yeah, what I'm saying. So, yeah, the control was there, but that's not to say Aston Villa didn't threaten. They had some players that looked like they was giving us a tough time. Again, Oli Watkins, like I said, he looked lively. He's got something to be proud of today. I felt that Bailey, when he came on, he fried Alonso at one point. He looked electric when he came on. Douglas Luiz, I thought, had a decent game. Um, who else am I missing? I thought um, Traore looked decent when he came on as well. Like, they did give it a go, man. 3 0 was a very, you know, we deserved the three goals, but I think Aston Villa are going to come away from that feeling like that wasn't a 3 0 loss performance. You know what I'm saying? And I think, you get me, it is what it is. When you come up against quality, elite quality European champions like Chelsea Football Club, these things are going to happen to you. If you're not clinical like Aston Villa were not today, that's what can happen to you. Because, look, our striker really had two clear cut opportunities. In fact, the first one I wouldn't even say was clear cut, he had to make that for himself. You get me? Obviously, the assist was there, but he had to make that from himself. Chop the man and then had to put the ball in. The second one again. That's really two opportunities that, that Lukaku had and he took them. And that's it. And that's the difference. I'm telling you, this season is our season. I reckon Chelsea are favourites to be winning the league. I know it's only four games in. People are going to talk about Cristiano Ronaldo this, Cristiano Ronaldo that. He got two goals in his debut. So did Bolingo Lee back at Stamford Bridge. You get me? 
Yeah, and we're the European champions. You need to remember that. Our squad depth is crazy. I'm looking at every single team as three points this season. Every team is a scalp. We are those guys. I don't care about City. I don't care about Liverpool. I don't care about Manchester United. I don't care about anybody who is being considered as title contenders this year. Yeah? I'm focused on Chelsea. Because Chelsea, the way we're looking, three points. Just give us our three points. And if we're getting three points, we don't need to worry about the others. Let them worry about Chelsea Football Club. Because this year, we're the team to beat. We are the team to beat. Again, I've got my prediction right. If you've been watching back again, you'll see it. 3-0 Chelsea. Emphatic win. Man of the match was Kovacic officially. And my man of the match was Kovacic. Definitely a 9 out of 10 performance. The only thing that stops me from giving cover a 10 is that I wish instead of him threading through that ball to hudson Odoi that he played it to Lukaku and gave the man the potential to get his hat-trick. Because it could have been a Balingali hat-trick today, you know. But unfortunately... Kovacic, as we've seen a few times, didn't make that final pass that he should have. Nonetheless, 9 out of 10 from Kovacic, world-class performance, absolutely world-class finish, world-class assist, world-class everything from Kovacic today. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments and please smash that like button. So far, you've been absolutely fantastic. I'm going to be back here again in the week with some more Chelsea content and more oh, and, and other teams as well. Look out for some post-matches from the Manchester United games and maybe the Liverpool game as well. Depends if Deck is going to be available for that. But until then, ladies, gents, whoever you are, man, wherever you are in the world, whatever time of the day it is, be safe, bless.